7 Surprising Things People Find Unattractive in Someone Did you know that attraction is far more complex than just physical appearance? Research in psychology suggests that certain behaviors and traits can greatly influence how attractive we find others, sometimes more than looks alone. According to a study from the University of Rochester, simple behaviors like how much one smiles can be a deciding factor in perceived attractiveness. Or surprisingly, things we often overlook, like how we converse or our body language, can either make us irresistible or, well, quite the opposite. It's these hidden turnoffs we're diving into today. These aren't your everyday run-of-the-mill deal breakers. We're talking about subtleties that might be flying under the radar. Some of these might seem odd. Some might even shock you. But all are backed by psychological research. So fasten your seatbelts as we embark on this enlightening journey through the fascinating world of human attraction. And who knows, by the end of the video, you might just find yourself rethinking some of your own behaviors. So let's get started, shall we? Number 7. Dining Etiquette More than just a meal. Have you ever considered that the way you handle your fork could be making or breaking impressions? Yes, dining etiquette. It's not just about food. It's a silent language all in itself. Picture this. Someone talking while their mouth is crammed full of food. Not the most appealing sight, is it? Psychologists agree that table manners are a window into our respect for others. From waiting patiently for everyone to be served, to treating waitstaff with kindness, it's all in the small details. Not to mention, it shows your dinner date that you care about their comfort. So before your next dinner out, why not take a moment to polish your table manners? Number 6. The Ever-Present Digital Companion Have you ever felt like you're competing with a phone for someone's attention? In our tech-driven world, it's easy to let our devices sneak into our social lives. But studies show that constantly checking your phone can leave the other person feeling undervalued. Screen addiction can indeed be a red flag hinting at a lack of self-control or an inability to live in the moment. So next time you're spending time with someone, try stashing the phone away. Your undivided attention can be a testament to your respect for them. And who wouldn't find that attractive? Number 5. The Fine Line High Standards versus Overly Critical Do you know someone who seems to find fault in just about everything? High standards can be an asset, but being overly critical? That's a whole different ballgame. It can be draining to be around someone who nitpicks every little detail, creating an environment that feels less than pleasant, even if the criticism is directed at themselves. Now, why is this such a turnoff? Well, psychologists say that people yearn to feel accepted and appreciated. When faced with constant criticism, they may start to feel unworthy or inadequate. The tendency to be overly critical can often signify underlying issues such as low self-esteem, a fear of failure, or perfectionism. It's not just about criticizing people either. Griping about the food at a restaurant or bashing a movie can also be a buzzkill. So why not foster a more empathetic and supportive atmosphere? As the saying goes, you catch more flies with honey than vinegar, right? Number 4. No skipping the basics. The impact of poor hygiene. Ever noticed how a foul smell can ruin an otherwise enjoyable encounter? The importance of good hygiene cannot be overstated. Bad breath, body odor, unkept appearance, all of these can be off-putting, leaving a negative imprint on people's minds. But remember, poor hygiene is not just about aesthetics. Experts say it could also be a cry for help, signaling underlying issues like depression or anxiety. If you or someone you know is struggling with maintaining basic hygiene, it might be a good idea to seek professional help. After all, cleanliness isn't just about making a good impression. It's about feeling good about oneself too. Number 3. To cling or not to cling. Finding the balance. Ever felt overwhelmed by someone who just can't seem to give you some space? Wanting to be around people we care about is natural, but being overly clingy can feel suffocating and exhausting. Do you know why it's important to give people their space? Psychologists say that seeking constant attention or validation from others can signal deeper issues like insecurity, fear of abandonment, or low self-esteem. Furthermore, studies show that overly clingy behavior can push people away. So how do we strike the balance? Start by nurturing your self-esteem and embracing your individuality. Set personal goals, follow your passions, and remember to respect other spaces and boundaries. After all, everyone likes to have their own breathing room. Let's strive to give space while staying connected, shall we? Number 2. The Art of Conversation Avoiding Interruptions You're in the middle of telling a fascinating story when suddenly the person you're talking to cuts you off. Feels like a punch in the gut, doesn't it? Communication is a two-way street, and there's little that's more off-putting than being frequently interrupted. 
Not only does it scream disrespect, but it can also lead to misunderstandings, create a frustrating conversational maze. We've all been guilty of interrupting others at some point, whether it's an overzealous jump into a sentence or a total hijacking of the conversation. Yet psychologists say that chronic interrupting could reflect an underlying egocentric behavior. So ask yourself, is it possible that you value the sound of your own voice more than others? So how can we steer away from this habit and elevate our conversation game? It's about embracing the power of pause. Active listening is not just about staying silent. It's about being fully engaged in what the other person is saying. Let's remember, a conversation isn't a contest. It's a dance of words. It's about building bridges, not walls, with our words. So let's ask more open-ended questions, maintain a healthy dialogue, and cherish that invaluable mutual respect. Sounds good, doesn't it? Number one, the double-edged sword, overusing sarcasm. You know sarcasm, right? The so-called highest form of intelligence? A witty, well-timed, sarcastic comment can indeed add zest to a conversation. But what happens when you start overdoing it? Just like too much spice can ruin a dish, excessive sarcasm can leave a bitter aftertaste, making you come across as snide or even rude. Here's something to ponder over. Experts suggest that a constant wave of sarcasm can be a defensive mechanism to avoid genuine emotional connection. It's as if sarcasm becomes a mask, a tool to dodge deeper more sincere discussions. But who wants a relationship where we hide behind a facade of humor, never really letting anyone in? So how can we ensure that sarcasm doesn't turn us into conversation repellents? The answer lies in balance. Let's try to use sarcasm sparingly, with awareness of its potential to prick. And here's a friendly reminder. Heartfelt, transparent communication never falls flat. Who doesn't appreciate an authentic exchange, right? All these habits, they're not set in stone. We have the power to change them, and in doing so, we can truly elevate our charm game. It's not about chasing perfection, but embracing growth. And let's be honest, who wouldn't want to hang around such a cool, evolving individual? Extend your self-improvement journey with our videos on 18 ways to be more attractive, or signs you're more attractive than you think. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss our upcoming content. Can't wait to catch up with you in our next video. Until then, keep evolving.